Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Today I filmed a makeup tutorial that I wore, or a makeup look, that I wore back in 2018, December 2018. When I had it on on my Instagram stories, everyone loved it and I never filmed it. So I'm doing that today because I thought it'd be a good Valentine's Day look that's not like a pink eyeshadow look or a red lip for those who want something a little bit different. So this is for you guys. Um, I used the Anastasia Soft Glam Palette, which is like one of my favorites. And I wanted to use something that hopefully you already had at home you didn't have to go out and buy. And that palette for me is such a staple. So love it. Maybe if you do go buy it, you'll get a lot of use out of it like I do because it is beautiful. And um, share some life updates and things like that. And this is the second time I filmed this video because the first time I didn't like how a message came across and I was super winded. And all the things. So I'll be washing my hair today. I have to go work out in like 10 minutes. And um, obviously the shirt. And this dang shirt. There's a button right here to keep it closed. It will not stay closed and I have a very hard time getting into this shirt. If you do not follow me on Instagram, stop what you're doing right now, exit off of the YouTube app, go follow me on Instagram at Brianna C. Lynch. I'll put it right here. That is where I'm most present. I do the most makeup there, tutorials, lives all the time. I have fun on there and I also like to laugh. So if you want to get on there and laugh, maybe if you're having a bad day, huh? Hopefully you're not because just know whether you know him or not. Jesus is right there beside you. All you have to do is ask him to carry you and lift that burden and he will be there because he's always there. He's always with you. But if you want to laugh too, go to my Instagram, watch my influencer, hashtag influencer highlight of a Beachy Dolls try on and you'll see this shirt. And by God, it's still driving me crazy. I had to put it on for the second time today. Bye bye for this video. Because then my camera was like half dead, I couldn't find my charger, couldn't take any thumbnail pictures. But I took one on my phone on my Instagram stories, that's what I'm going to use. So that's what you're seeing. But anyway, no more rambling in the intro. Just a lot's happening. There's an update. This video was filmed very quickly because I have to leave. And I have to go work out with makeup on. Ugh, I don't ever like to do that. But here we are. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And let's get to the video. Just realized my kids were screaming, bloody murder, didn't even notice. It's when you have two kids, you just tune stuff out. Now, I did just wash my face, moisturizer, sunscreen, all that good stuff. And for me personally, my makeup applies the most smooth and like just seamless whenever I just wash and cleanse my face or just wash and moisturize my face. So if you're feeling like your makeup is kind of patchy, it's not applying how you want it to, Sorry, it's like a torrential downpour. The kids' school got delayed two hours, but I still have to go work out at 8.40, um, and it's 7.26. So <laughs> I also live about 15, 20 minutes away from my place of workout. So um, yeah, anyway. Um, so anyway, if you feel like your makeup's applying patchy, it's not looking how you want it to, and you're waiting like 30 minutes or maybe an hour after you wash your face to put your makeup on, that's probably why. So you can always take your moisturizer, put another layer back on. I wouldn't apply my makeup within five minutes of washing my face. I like the five to 15 minute window. Um, but if you wait any longer than that or any sooner than that, typically your makeup um, or moisturizer has kind of sunk into your skin differently and absorbed differently and then your makeup just doesn't apply as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit more of MAC Strobe Cream, um, which this is pretty anyway. They have like four different colors. This one is the Silver Light. Um, but they all do the same thing. So they smell good, not too heavy, but it does have a scent. And um, it's a good moisturizer and also has a little bit of a sheen to it. So I love this. I use it in my freelance kit as well on clients. And I highly recommend it to anyone who needs a good moisturizer before makeup because it's not too heavy. So if you have been having an issue with that and you try out my little 5 to 15 minute trick, let me know what you think. Now, a product that I got to try out since it's the second time that I'm filming this video was the Glam Glow super mattify clarifying primer and i have to say when i filmed this video the first time i mentioned how i use or have used the um soap and glory heck of a lot or heck of a lot the smashbox oil and control the new one that's in the blue tube um i've used the nars pour and shine that's what i normally use um the hourglass primer but this one, my chin looked really good by the end of the day. Still a little bit shiny, but nothing compared to like the hour after I do my makeup normally with this Glam Glow Primer, so I'm super impressed. And it has that same kind of putty consistency, like a um, the Tatcha Silk Canvas, and this packaging is super nice and pretty. So, so far I'm impressed with that. I'm gonna take my Sisley Primer for the rest of my face. 
and this primer is very pricey this is my second bottle um, I'm probably not almost out of it but I always end up going back to it out of all the other primers that I try because I don't want to love a $200 primer honestly but I did repurchase it and I'll probably repurchase it again because it's it's just so pretty so I'm gonna apply that all over it locks my makeup in all day and doesn't do too much under my skin because like I know like a lot of glowy primers will make my makeup separate and this is the one I like. Sorry, I'm so winded. Whew. Okay. So, um, we'll do a little bit of cream contouring because I did that in my first video. But instead of doing it underneath my foundation, I'm going to do it on top. So, I'm going to go in with my L'Oreal Fresh Wear Foundation. This is Shade 440 Natural Rose. Um, beautiful, beautiful foundation. I'm almost out of this one. I have a backup, but I want to use all that stuff in this before I open another one. So, you want to shake it well because it's very watery. And you guys, it seriously just makes you look airbrushed. I don't understand why. It's really light on the skin. It's beautiful. Oops. Oh no, what on the phone? Same thing happened last time because it is so empty. Which I might as well use it. So, um, I'm not tan, so this is my non-tan shade. Still a little bit too dark for me, but that's okay. And, um... I actually had to buy shades for my freelance kit because I love it so much. It's just, it gives a beautiful finish. <laughs> and it does have a little bit of a fragrance to it. Whenever I'm washing my foundation brushes for my kit, I'm like, oof, what is that? And it's this foundation. Okay, so I dot that all over my face. I don't like to dip my sponge or brush right into the product in the back of my hand just because I feel like the damp, um, the damp sponge or the brush sucks up most of that product and then you have to put more in the back of your hand so you're essentially wasting it because it's not ever going to actually be on your face. So I will put a little bit on my ears, not a lot, but they are a little bit red. So I do try to blend them in somewhat, but nothing crazy. And then I'm just going to apply that over my face with stippling motions. This is buildable, but I would say it has like a good medium coverage to start because I had a big old red recovering pimple there and it will cover it. But I also don't want to cake my makeup on, even to cover up a bump. So I'll go back in with another layer. So to all the updates and stuff, um, I had to refilm this again just because I was telling you so much about what has been going on that I forgot to really, ex I was still explaining how to do the makeup, but it was taking a really long time. And I know some people don't want to sit through a whole long video when they're just trying to figure out how I got the makeup look. So um, while I'm doing my foundation, so for now, it's 2020. I've been gone again off YouTube for a couple months for no other reason than, I mean, yes, life has been a little bit crazy, nothing too major, but um, just haven't wanted to do it. So I'm on Instagram a lot. Like I said in my intro, if you want to see me more, more makeup, more of my life, you want to follow me on Instagram because I'm there all the time. So I was still on Instagram a lot. I do makeup tutorials there. I just have fun on my Instagram stories, um, and I've been there just on YouTube. So, um, it's 2020, my husband and I will be married for four years this year in April. I will be 25 at the end of this month on the 28th. Um, my kids will be six and three this year, which is crazy. Um, let's see, back in November... I actually had a mini mom makeover, so my boobs were so tiny. Um, not necessarily after I rested, even though they made them a little bit more saggy, <laughs> a lot saggy. But when I started to um, work out a lot and kind of watch what I was eating, um, they like went away completely. And also, I guess it did kind of have something to do with um, one weekend I went out of town and I forgot my pump, and Graham was like, uh, he was pretty old at the time, still a baby, but older. And so I just let my, I had to let my boobs dry up because when I got home to nurse him, I felt like acid was coming out of my body. Don't let that scare you if you want to have a baby and nurse. It's not that bad, but it was because my boobs were super engorged and I didn't have a baby for two days or a pump. So anyway, then they deflated, but then it also got worse after I started exercising and losing weight. So um, back in November, I went and had a consultation and two weeks later I scheduled my surgery so I had a breast augmentation I can do more on those or answer questions on that because I'm not you know modest at all 
and I don't mind. Um, so if you guys want to know more about that, I did get 495 cc's, which I was like a 34B with a lot of gapping in my bra. This is a Victoria's Secret bra, so every bra and brand is going to be different. But um, this is the Too Faced Wonderless Way Concealer in the shade Honey. You want to use it very sparingly because it is pigmented. So anyway, now um, in Victoria's Secret bra still, I'm a 34 double D, which I want to be like a full C, and they look really good on me, but your cup size doesn't really translate to a CC size, but I feel like 450 is the sweet spot, because now um, we're going to Aruba on Sunday, today's Thursday, and I went to go buy a bunch of bathing suits, and all my bottoms are mediums, and my tops are larges, but the tops are still too small, even though my boobs aren't that big, the tops are still too small. And, um, and, but they're too big around my back. So I'll have to go find a new brand of bathing suits that will actually work if you have boobs. So if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. Maybe that go by cup size and not just small, medium, large, extra large, um, because that's not going to work for me. So I have a couple that are going to work. I just have to make sure my nipples don't pop out. And um, then along with that little surgery, I got some liposuction on my love handles. Now, I do have loose skin around my stomach, like on my belly button, from having two kids. And um, when I went into my consultation, I wasn't even thinking about anything except for the breast augmentation. But my doctor, I asked him, I was like, wait, could you suck out my love handles? Because that's my problem area, is my love handles, or the flanks is what they call them. And when I stood up, he's like, well, I didn't even notice. I also had them high waisted jeans, so they were kind of pulled up over them. But <clears throat> he um, he said, well, you know, you'd actually be a candidate for tummy tuck. He said, I see you have definition on your stomach, but that's not ever going to get rid of the loose skin. So I thought about getting a tummy tuck, and I put it on my list of things to do. And I was like, wait, I'm only 24. Do I really need a tummy tuck? And um, I just kind of started to freak out about it. I was like, well, how, wait, how soon do you guys need to know that I'm not going to do it? He said, well, usually two weeks before the surgery but you're two weeks before the surgery. I said, okay, well, I'll call you by the end of the day. This is at my consultation. I'll call you at the end of the day, let you know what I've decided. So I called them the next day because I still wasn't sure and I decided I was going to do it, thankfully. <clears throat> so didn't do it, got my liposuction. I still have bruises three months later. My surgery was November 11th. Still have bruising. It was pretty intense, way worse than the boobs were. But if you've ever watched a video of them doing liposuction, it's very intense. This was also the Too Faced Born This Way in the shade Swan. It's one of the lighter shades. I like a bright under eye. I also use the um, Expert Face Brush from Real Techniques to blend out my cream contour, but see, you need a very little bit because it is very full coverage and um, pigmented. And also, um, when I applied the cream contour, I applied it higher up than what I would want it to be because when you blend it out, it does go low. So you see how low it was? Had I brought it down here, right by my ear, it would be way down here. So just keep that in mind. I'm also going to take a little bit of concealer on the side of my mouth to add a little extra brightness. This is also the shade Swan. But anyway, um, <clears throat> what was I saying? I can't remember. Oh yeah, so then, I don't remember what I was saying. That's okay. Something about the surgery, but I can't remember. So the surgery is on November 11th, and then a week later, or not a week later, four days later, because I stayed in a hotel um, two days after my surgery just to kind of recover. My sister kept my kids because she's the best. Oops. <laughs> and um, I usually do do that first, don't I? Sorry. I can't talk and do my makeup. It's a proven fact. So um, when I got home, we were making dinner with my in-laws. And the kids were wearing their Spider-Man costumes. Next thing we know, we're in the kitchen. Graham is running around just back and forth. And then we hear him screaming. And I put my head outside of our kitchen because it's not open, but there's a big door right here and a big opening on the side, but there's cabinets right here and a countertop. I was standing at those cabinets on the countertop, put my head out of the doorway, and he's in the fetal position on our dining room rug. Will not stop crying. I pick him up. I'm like, are you okay? And usually even if he falls and he's hurt and I say, are you okay? He's like, uh-huh. He was screaming bloody murder. He was squeezing his leg where he had claw marks on it and would not stop crying. That's unlike him. So we look at his leg. Oops, I guess that's eyelash glue all in my eyelashes. We look at his leg and it is swollen and we knew something was wrong. So we get in the car 
there's a hospital near us, but it's not the best hospital in the world. The only thing I would do with that hospital is have a baby there, which sounds crazy, but their labor and delivery is amazing. Everything else, not so much. So we were not going to take him there. We we're going to take him to Children's in Birmingham. So as we're going to this hospital, every time I'd put on my brakes or go over a bump, he would scream. And Spencer was just holding him in the back seat because he was pitiful. So we knew something was really wrong. So we ended up going to the emergency room at RMC and they got him back like as soon as we got there, which was amazing. They were really good there. Um, Cause I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna say every doctor and nurse is terrible there. I don't know enough about it. I've just heard stories and their rating's not the best from what I saw on Facebook. Um, but anyway, they got him back there. They were super amazing. Did an x-ray and our poor little Graham has fractured his femur. Oh. So three days after I get my surgery, our baby's in a body cast. And he had it on for six weeks. I'll insert some pictures. He was a trooper. Like, and everyone was like, you know, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be terrible. It was not bad at all. The first couple of days were bad because the bone was still like not stuck back together and it was hurting him. So he was jumping in his sleep a lot and all that kind of stuff, but um it was okay. And two, when you're blending out your concealer, you want to not just keep it right up under your eye, you want to blend it all around. So that way your face is really smooth and seamless and you don't have that bright like white eye patch is what I'll call it, right underneath your eye. Yeah, so Graham was in a body cast. Um, and then, what else? On Christmas, we had these little, oh crap, it's 7.45, okay, stalking hooks from TJ Maxx that said J-O-Y, Joy, and they had two snowflakes on the end. So we do have two dogs. We had, oh yeah, we got a new dog. Her name's Kelsey. She's a English cream retriever, which just means she's a golden retriever that's cream. <laughs> and he's super cute, really smart, sweet girl. But um, we got, you know, five stockings. So we had one for the dogs and one for each of us. So then on Christmas, our family gets here and um, Spencer's like, you guys see how we have five stockings? And they're like, yeah. He said, we're pregnant. And they're all like sitting there and I'm just looking at him. It was a joke, but turns out the day after Christmas, we um, go to Waffle House. And I was talking to one of my friends who loves steak like I love steak. She was saying how their steak is really good, but the last time she went, it was bad and she was really sick because we were at a meeting together when she got really sick. But I still decided I would try it. So I tried the steak and then for like a week after that, I was feeling so sick all day long. So I was like taking charcoal pills, try to absorb what was in my stomach just to help. Like I was miserable. And the same thing happened to me, but with worse symptoms back in April of 2019. So I thought that's what the same thing was because I felt the same way, just not as bad. Well, finally I'm feeling that way for so long. My husband was like, you need to take a pregnancy test. And to be quite honest, if you follow me on Instagram, you've heard me talk about it before, but I always keep pregnancy tests at the house because um, I just want to know if I'm not pregnant. And I am on birth control, or was, but um, I just always have them just to feel safe because I, at some point, like a couple months ago, I was like, do I want a third child? Because then if I had a third child, what's one more? Like, do I need four kids? No. Do I need three kids? No. Um, so I really like made up my mind that we weren't having any more kids. So. Take this pregnancy test. I could do a whole story time video about this, but it actually turns out I am expecting our third child. So, we're having another baby. And I swear, Spitzer was out of town the first week of um, December. I swear that, um, sorry. I set my under eye with the um, Maybelline Fit Me loose powder in the shade Fair 05. A lot of you guys watch my Instagram lives and I use the same products all the time, so I have like a broken record. Now I'm gonna use the Jaclyn Hill powder in the shade um, Do Me. Before I do that, I'm gonna take my NC20 Studio Fix powder from MAC and my EcoTools Full Powder Brush and just set all over, cause I am about to go work out, but I'm gonna try to wear this makeup to a birthday party <laughs> after I'm done. Then come home, at least wash my body, but it's also hair washing day, but it's okay. I had to do this first. So, um, just gonna just apply this with her brush. This is the JH01. I used to apply it with a damp sponge, but you do get a little bit more payoff with this brush. And it is super soft. It's hard to believe that it's synthetic. 
and not natural hair. So very impressed with that. I'm just going to oops, put it all over. I kind of tap off some excess in the cap. I love these powders, but I also love the Lancome Absolute Powder. But I bought three different shades of Jacqueline's and they are beautiful. So didn't mean to put that on my shampoo, but that's okay. So anyway, um, forgot what I was saying again. Um, I could do a story time more about my whole pregnancy, which obviously I'm still surprised. It feels like I'm like 50 years old having my third child. I'm like shocked. So I'm still super young, but I'm still like, I'm really pregnant. <laughs> what? It's just an odd time. Am I excited? Yes. Cause like I said, before I decided I really didn't want any more kids. Um, I was like, you know, if I have three kids, what's four? And I just bought this big, long SUV, one of the long ones. And it's just funny how God knows what he's doing, you know? And I'm so, I am excited. I'm still just shocked. And I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. We're doing a gender reveal. But we out of town when our results will be back. So we'll probably just do our pictures at the end of the month. And then we'll find out what the baby is. They're going to call Spencer's assistant. and Or she's going to go pick up the results. And I told her she could look at them if she wanted to, to know before we do. But I bought smoke bombs and little confetti things and... We're going to take a picture with um, one of my friends and photographers, and she's going to get our reaction. So we will see what it is. I haven't thought of any names. We've talked about names for a little bit, but I don't really know. I don't know if I just feel weird because I'm having another child and I wasn't expecting to. But I've thought about some names, but I'm, I just want to know if it's a boy or a girl because I was super sick, and I still have been sick. But anyway, oh, yeah, that's the thing that I was saying. I swear that I had a period in December, but obviously not because my due date's August 23rd, so I'm 12 weeks pregnant on Sunday. And... Um, three months, which is freaking crazy to me. The end of my first trimester, trimester, like what? So I've been pregnant for a minute, like um, right after my surgery. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, it's fine. I'm just shocked. Excited, but still shocked. Who doesn't want a little sweet baby to carry around? Um, but now, okay, so that's pretty much a life update. I am pregnant, guys. So surprised. Like I was not having any more children, but I'm glad I didn't get a tummy tuck because now I'm probably going to need one after my stomach is stretched out again for a third child <laughs> and I am going to try to nurse again if it messes up my boobs I'll get some more it's just money not a big deal um, and honestly then putting me to sleep was the best sleep I've ever had in my life every mom needs that surgery nap <laughs> this is a physician's formula butter bronzer in the shade bronzer so it's like the original one and this is a Tom Ford 05 brush um, this brush is very expensive. It's like over $100. I can't remember now because I've had it for so long. It's very soft and it's good, but if you want a good alternative, JH02 from Morphe. Very similar. I use this one a lot, but I washed it and have been trying to go back and forth with this one, so I didn't wear that one out. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to apply that all over the high points of my forehead and underneath that cream contour. And everything just looks really blown out and smooth. For my blush, I'm going to take this Wayne Goss number 11 brush and if you do follow me on Instagram I have a highlight of all my favorite brushes saved um, if you want to see what brushes I always use which I do use the same ones pretty much every time but um, Spencer bought me these Wayne Goss brushes for Mother's Day last year and um, I haven't really been using them a lot so I've been trying to use a couple of them more often so um, I'll show you when I wipe off my under eye powder the other one that I use is the number 10, I believe. And these are really soft. I know why they're so expensive. But um, I still like to use my more inexpensive little brushes. But I'm just trying to use what he bought me. So now I'm going to take that Wayne Goss brush. And I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury powder in the shade 01. Fair. This is the like airbrush flawless finish. And it's going to wipe off the under eye powder that I applied when I put on my concealer. I can't not bake my under eye. Usually I don't leave it on as long as I just did. I'm just talking and distracted. But for some reason I will always crease if I don't leave powder up underneath my eyes for, you know, even just a couple seconds. I can't just take a brush and set my under eye. It does not work that way for me. <laughs> okay, so now for highlight, I'm going to take this Milk Makeup Highlight in the shade Iced. It is so beautiful. I've been using this like nonstop. Um, I actually bought this the night before my surgery. I was like, I'm going to go shopping. And I'm glad I bought it because it's really pretty. I use it a lot more than what I thought I would. Just a little bit of a glow. I mean, it's very blinding if you can build it up. But um, 
forgot to put blush on my nose. Who am I? That's because I forgot to contour my nose. That's what it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't need any pregnancy brain. I'm already struggling as it is. Not really. But still. This is the Real Techniques Base Shadow Brush. That I'm just putting that more on the bridge of my nose, but a little bit on the sides. If you put too much bronzer on the sides of your nose, it's going to make the bridge of your nose look brighter and wider, which is going to make it look wider as well. So it's doing the opposite of what you want it to. If you want your nose to look smaller, you have to put some contour on the bridge of your nose, not just on the sides, or it's going to look like a skunk tail. My motto is hashtag no skunk tails. I'm very passionate about it. So, just a little tip for your nose contouring. Don't just do it on the sides because you're going to make your nose look bigger. Got to do it on the bridge. Okay, so I'm putting some blush on my nose because I forgot. And this is MAC Dainty Blush. I don't know if I said that to mineralize. It's beautiful. Now for the eyebrows. Another thing I did while I've been gone is um, got my eyebrows microbladed by Millie at Brows by Millie and she's amazing. So I could leave them like this if I wanted to, but I do wear a little bit more makeup. So um, I still fill them in, but they they seriously look incredible and she's incredible. So highly recommend her. I'll leave her Instagram link or website link in the description box because she has a team of other people who do brows too because she books up like months in advance. I booked my appointment with her in August, I think, and her first available appointment was November 6th and that's when I got mine done. And then you go for a follow-up three weeks later. You can't get them wet or sweat for 10 days. And it's the same thing for the follow-up. And then you will get them touched up every 12 to 18 months. Sometimes people can go two years, depending on how their skin is. I'm not talking to you, Siri. Um, but I won't be able to get mine touched up if I want the lidocaine. And to me, this was very painful. I also got a tattoo while I was gone. It's the only one I'll ever get. It was terrible, and it's so small. But it's the two millimeter rule. It's the small changes in life that make a difference. You can Google it, there's more about it. But um, some of, me and some of my work friends went to a Tony Robbins, was it UPW or Business Mastery? We've been to both since I've been on here last. I think it was UPW. Um, he mentioned it there and we were like, whoa, that's like legit. So I went and got a tattoo, my only one, and it will be the only one I ever get. My sister was so mad because she's always wanted to get a sister tattoo with me and she has several tattoos, like big ones. And I would never do it. And I'll have this one. She's like, what the heck? Oh, well, I will never have another one. It was painful. So anyways, I can't, I can't not have the numbing, but I might have to do it for my eyebrows. Because I also started do, doing um, laser hair removal, which has been amazing. I've done two sessions on the bottom half of my legs, full Brazilian, and my underarms, and a little spot on my stomach that is weird and grows black and not blonde. But um, it was amazing, but now I have to stop doing that too because <laughs> you can't do it while you're pregnant and um, or breastfeeding, I don't think. But maybe you can. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I think that's it. So I'm just laying my eyebrows with the Kat Von D Signature Brow Pencil. I love this. Again, I have another highlight saved on my Instagram stories of me filling in my brows with this pencil before I got them microbladed so you can actually see how I do it in the process because now they're already pretty much done for me. Oops. So it's not quite the same, but this pencil is amazing. Better than the Brow Definer for me, the Brow Wiz, the NYX, all the above. It just gives you the most beautiful finish, but you can still make them bold if you want to. So I can't recommend it enough. So now for my eyes. Like I mentioned, I'm using the Soft Glam Palette. And I did this look back in 2018. And I remember how to do it. And I got a lot of questions when I put it on. And it is really pretty. So it is the R... 37 right here, Big Fluffy Brush. This is all in my highlights about the brushes that I like to use. Um, I'm gonna take Orange Soda first, which is that light transition shade. Apply that into my crease, just using windshield wiper motions. It is such a light shade, you don't have to be too precise with it. But you're just gonna apply it, get a nice good base, because it's best to start with the lighter shades and work your way to the darkest, especially as a beginner. And then now I'm going to take Burnt Orange, which is a little bit deeper. Another tip for you guys is when you're applying your eyeshadow, instead of dipping your brush straight in, up and down, um, dip the brush in sideways. So that way when you put it on, all the color is right there on the brush, not at the top. And you know exactly where it's going to be placed. So then you can pat the color down 
and then blend it out. And that helps so, so much. I can't recommend that enough. If you're afraid of eyeshadow and blending, dip your brush in the side, tap off the excess, pat the color down, and then blend it out. Works like a charm. This is my big gang gang. Say, I'm gonna be free. Look at him so you can see your cute face. I know it's bright, you just woke up. Say, I'm gonna be free in July. Are you ready to have a baby brother or sister? You want a sister or a brother? A brother. You want a brother? Or do you want a brother or a sister? Uh, I don't want a sister. You don't want a sister? <laughs> Usually he'll repeat the last thing you say. So if you switch the question around, he'll say what she just said last. But eyes. It's um highlighter. From milk. Can you say hello? Um, I'll probably save an appointment for when we come back. So we have some. Dad, I fell off he fell off again. He hit his head at school. That's what that little spot is. But he's been beating up a lot over the months. Okay. So that's my boy. Like he's so handsome. Come right here so I can see you. He looks just like me. He my tweeny twin twin. Okay. But what's that makeup on there? What? Oh, I don't know. I think it's it's old. I've had this for six years and it has that little spot in it. Still using it. <laughs> don't want to let go of it because it's my first makeup mirror that I ever had. Okay, now I'm going to on his iPad, so it's time. We don't have time. 7.59. So now I'm going to take Dusty Rose right here. The same brush. I just wiped off any brown that might have been on it. And um, I'm just going to apply that right on top. It's a weird combination of colors, but when it all comes together, it's beautiful. And I'm just going to focus it on the outer V mostly, but then still blending it in toward the inner third of my eye. Okay, so now I'm going to take a Morphe M433, and I'm going to dip into the shade Mulberry right here. And I'm going to build that up a little bit. I'm going to use my pat and drag technique so you pat it in so you know exactly where the color is going to go after you dip the brush in sideways and then drag it out or blend it out. Just slight little movements. So pat, hold on, thank you very much. Pat and drag. You can add a little bit of noir in there first if you want to, but I think there was a little bit on my brush when I did this before, so it's a little bit darker already, so I'm not going to add it in today, but you can if you want this effect. It was just already on my brush. So I'm just patting it in, blending it out with little motions. And now for my lid shade, I'm going to take the shade Rose Pink first, which is just like a satin kind of shimmer. It doesn't have like a ton of glitter in it. It's a pretty kind of pinkish shade. I'm going to apply it with my finger. I always apply my eyeshadows with my finger on my lid. Just because I feel like you get the most color payoff that way. But you can use a brush and spray it with Fix Plus or Finishing Spray if you want more payoff. It's just always done it this way. And then I'm going to take Sultry, which is a little bit more metallic and more purple. And it is beautiful. I don't know if that's out of focus. I'm just going to apply that with my finger as well. Pack it on there. And take a little bit more of Dusty Rose on that R37 brush and just blend back over one more time. Just to kind of blend in that purple on my lid. Because my eyelids are really flat, so you might not have to do this, but I do because it's one flat thing. I have no like real crease. And then I don't really wear eyeliner anymore. I used to love a good winged eyeliner, but now I just do faux eyeliner with eyeshadow. So I use this Morphe M432. It's a flat little definer brush. I'm going to take Noir from the palette and just press that right up against my lashes. So it's super close. And just look, it makes my eyelashes look fuller and it still adds a little extra pop without being, you know, winged eyeliner. So it's also kind of easier because you don't have to worry about the mess. Okay, so now, I also want to hear what you guys think. You think I'm having a girl or another boy? The heart rate was 170. I've been super sick. I was never sick with the first ones. With Grayson, 
sorry, with Grayson. Um, I would wake up in the morning, throw up once, and I was fine the rest of the day. Graham, I was never sick or nauseous, and this one I was super sick. Not actually throwing up, but just like sick all day long. And I've been super lazy and tired this pregnancy, um, which is, you know, not really like me, especially with my pregnancies. Not that I'm like super active, always busy, but you know, it's different. So that doesn't really necessarily mean anything. I just wanna know what you guys feel. So what I normally do is instead of taking eyeshadow underneath my lower lash line, I'll use what's left on the brush of the Noir and just um, press it into my lower lashes. But I will still use eyeshadow for this look. So I'm going to take um, Mulberry first. I like to go from the darkest to lightest on my lower lash line and blend that in just to kind of smoke it out. And then I'm going to take a little bit of... Um, burnt orange and orange soda, just to really smooth out the lines, add a little bit of the warmth that we have in the crease down here as well. And then I'm gonna switch out from my Soft Glam palette and go into my Z palette. Um, you guys have been asking me to do a video on the swatches and shades in this for the longest time, and I've switched it up so many times, but I am gonna do that. And this is MAC Nylon and a little pencil brush. I'm just gonna add that in. It just has that little pop and brightens and opens up your eye and this shade is perfect for it. And then I'm gonna take my Sephora brand Lash Glue and these Bronze Beauty lashes from Ilor and Vegas Nay. Um, the first time I filmed this video, I did show you guys how I trimmed them and everything, but um, they're already trimmed. It's my last pair. So I will do a video dedicated strictly on eyelash application, but I'm sure you can find some um, if you're wanting to wear eyelashes for Valentine's Day to have a little extra pop because they really do make an extra pop it makes a big difference so I'm gonna put that glue on there let it get tacky which is one of the major tricks of it while I'm putting on my mascara this is the essence lash princess so I'm gonna put on a little coat of that yeah okay let me add a little bit of Marc Jacobs pink of me eyeliner in my waterline, just getting it downstairs in my purse because I already wore this look. Or hold on a second, there it is. Okay, Pink of Me by Marc Jacobs. I'm gonna apply that into my waterline. You guys, Spider Man? Uh oh, Spider Man just took a plunge in my eyeshadow palette. I like to apply lighter eyeliner. Um, no, sir, boo, don't do that. He can sit right there, but you don't want to throw him. Um, Oops, sorry. You want to sit with me? Uh, I like to apply my lighter eyeliner before I do my bottom mascara because I typically get it on my waterline and then it um, kind of smudges into the light eyeshadow or eyeliner and makes it gray. So this is the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Whatever Mascara from MAC. Very long name. Gonna put that on my bottom eyelashes and then my fan is going so my eyelashes are ready to go on first thing i always do is apply it from the top you don't want to apply it from underneath because then it gets stuck in your real eyelashes and makes a mess stick it on in the center apply the outer corner and then apply the inner corner oopsie maybe it wasn't as dry as i thought it's easier to let it get tacky so that when you put it on, it actually stays, it's not sliding around. I'm gonna take the Urban Decay All Nighter first. I'm gonna take it first. And then um, I'm gonna go in with the Farsali Rose Gold Skin Mist. The Farsali Rose Gold Skin Mist. It's not a finishing spray, even though it says it's a setting spray. Sorry, I didn't even say finishing, it's setting spray. It says it is on the bottle. But it's actually, to me, a finishing spray. So like Mac Fix Plus has glycerin in it, which is meant to make the makeup on your face look more like skin and kind of melt into your skin. Not so much make it last all day like the Urban Decay Liner. Then I'm gonna take this Patrick Tall spray. This is the pink one um, in We Love Her. Um, he uses like a fan and stuff and does it a little bit closer and more precise. I just kind of do it all over. 
And this reminds me a lot of the Sephora Universal Spray that they had and discontinued. It's like airbrush in a can, but this one has a little bit more shimmer. It smells the same. It feels the same on your face, like nothing, but it looks beautiful. So if you want to pick this one up because you could never get the Sephora one, I do recommend it. Yes, three different shades. So now for my lips, the first time I tried this, I wanted to do a drugstore lip combo, but I can never get the NYX lip liners to be pigmented on me or my clients, but I know a lot of people love them. So um, I started out with that one, which would be a good alternative if you like it. It's the shade Nude Beige, but I'm gonna use NARS Aries. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's H-Y-E-R-E-S. Um, and just line my lips. The lipstick that I use is Fair Snood from L'Oreal. You see one of my absolute favorites, especially on my clients. I'm gonna apply that all over. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed my little life update. I'll be doing a more in-depth video. Of, you know, everything else. But I did have a slight time crunch. So I should be leaving my house right now, but that's okay. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're not already, please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.